for one. A couple of you have been asking about the genetic testing updates that I filmed last year. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you may as well go and find my playlist that I made about this. And um, you can sort of get yourself up to speed with what I'm talking about. I actually started my, my whole genetic testing journey last May. So, like 10 months ago, which is quite a long time. And it, it took a lot longer than I expected, but never mind. Um, I'm here now. So I'm not going to beat around the bush. Basically, my test results came back positive for myotonic dystrophy, so I have inherited that from my dad. I actually got my results three months ago, uh, just before Christmas. Uh, it's three months ago exactly today. Uh, I got them three months ago, and I got it via letter. They, they did ask me if it would be alright to write to me with the results, and I said yes. What is myotonic dystrophy is Myotonic dystrophy is obviously, it affects the muscles, uh, it's characterised by muscle weakness and um, the, the muscles don't respond as they should do. So for example, if I'm trying to get the lid off a, off a jar and I'm having to use a lot of force, it may be that I will find it difficult to release my hand from the top of the jar. It will basically just feel like it's locked for a few seconds before it releases. And that is, that is the actual myotonia, like that is what myotonia is, is when your muscles kind of contract and they won't let go. It's genetic, right? So it's basically like a, a genetic abnormality, it's like a mutation, and um, there's no cure yet. But when my dad got diagnosed, which must have been like over 10 years ago now, uh, they didn't know a lot about it. But, like with all things, they're always making advances and, um, you know, learning more about it. So it may well be that within my lifetime, and maybe within Leo's, that um, they will find a cure. So I have adult onset myotonic dystrophy, and there is a 50% chance that Leo has the adult onset too. That it's possible for women who have myotonic dystrophy to pass it on to their children in the congenital form, which is a very severe disability and uh, often results in not only physical, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, um, basically it, it, it results in sort of physical problems but also like cognitive and developmental problems. Children sometimes die in early infancy, sometimes they die um, in childhood. Uh, my, I had two cousins who had this, the congenital version, and um, they died at the ages of 18 and 19, or maybe like 20, I can't remember, but it was a few years ago now, and uh, they were only a couple of years apart, so Obviously, my aunt, who, whose children they were, she lost two children very quickly out of her three. Obviously, I feel really uh, grateful that Leo did not have the congenital version. Uh, <laughs> you know, looking back on that retrospectively and with hindsight and everything, it's just, it feels like it was a huge kind of gamble. It was a knife edge and it could have gone the other way so easily. But it didn't, and I have a very happy, healthy little boy. It does bother me somewhat that he might have the adult, adult form, but we're not going to get him tested because, for now, he seems perfectly healthy, happy, and it would just be a huge ordeal and a big trauma for him, so I'm not going to put him through that until he's old enough to understand and want to do it himself, pretty much. So like I said, there's no cure. Uh, it varies in severity from person to person. Some people who have it may never know that they have it and may only get sort of cataracts in older age, which is quite common, but it is a symptom of myotonic dystrophy. Or other people may be more greatly affected and have trouble with mobility, um, trouble with breathing, because obviously it affects your muscles, So, and your muscles get progressively weaker, and it affects every single muscle in your body, including your brain. It, it can affect the sort of neural pathways in your brain, which is not great. 
This video is one that I have been trying for so long to do. I did it like a week after I got the results. I filmed it once, but it was all way too fresh still, and I... Because obviously this wasn't the news I was hoping for. I was hoping that I was going to get the all clear and it was going to be fine, but I don't. I haven't got the all clear. I don't know how severe it will be for me. I started to notice symptoms in my late teens, probably about the age of 17 or 18, and it didn't occur to me that that could be what it was until, I don't know, maybe when I was about 19. And I had always wondered if I had it too, but my parents had said that they thought I was fine, so I didn't worry about it. Like last year, I started to really think about it, seriously, and um, and went through with the testing. Um, when my dad got diagnosed, I think it was just that my parents didn't want to do that for me at that time, uh, when my dad got diagnosed, because I think it was not long after my sister had died. She had it too, but it wasn't her primary condition. She had leukodystrophy, which was another completely rare lottery kind of luck of the draw thing, and then she had myotonic dystrophy on top. But she still had the adult onset, I think, but it just came around a lot sooner because of other problems, I think, anyway. And uh, my sister recently died, and then they had this diagnosis from my dad, and doctors started to ask about me, and I think my mom just felt like it was too much. Like, she's, she had already kind of been through the, the trauma of losing one child, and then to be told that there's actually wrong with your, something wrong with your other child would be pretty traumatic. And this is a very... is a very real situation. I thought this would be easier to do. I thought I was feeling brave. I thought I'd be able to do this today. But obviously it's still very fresh. And obviously three months is not enough time to get to grips with this. I really thought this would be easier. I didn't see this coming at all. This is as real as it gets. And I know that one of the things that people have told me before that they like about my vlogs is that I don't hide anything. It's, it's all real. And I hate that there's going to be family members watching this. They don't like seeing me like this. All of my family have been very supportive. John's been great. All of my immediate family know. And obviously my dad has it, so, you know, we're able to talk about it. But there's been so much progress since he was diagnosed that I know a lot more than him currently. I know that there are two types, DM1 and DM2, but the hospital have never really told me. They've never, they didn't tell me what type it was, and they didn't tell me, they didn't offer me any kind of follow-up. So I've just been given the diagnosis and kind of left to it, really, which is kind of poor, I think. Day to day, I don't really... It's not that I don't think about it, I do, I think about it, but I have more to keep my mind busy. It's only when I have to do something like this that I kind of get a bit upset about it. And you guys are all so supportive, it's so nice. And obviously I'm not the only person who has genetic problems, you know, there are all sorts of people out there who have problems that are worse than mine. I have such respect for them, really. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to put this on the internet. Like, this is my life. This is so real, you know? It's, I should try and get a grip. Right. Anyway, the good news is that it can be managed. It can be managed uh, through diet and uh, exercise. Um, there are some implications, like... I should really wear a, a sort of one of those medical bracelets 
so that if I was in an accident, I would be able to, people would know that I had like a, a problem. And the specific problem with myotonic dystrophy is that if you have to have general anesthetic, it can kill you because um, it's a muscle relaxant and obviously it, it lowers your heart rate and uh, it, it can stop your heart. Uh, so, uh, you know, your heart's a muscle, myotonic dystrophy affects your muscles, therefore, you know, it General anesthesia is not generally, it has to be handled differently. I should really get a little card that goes in my purse that tells people what I have. So far the symptoms that I experience is, like I said, the myotonia with the gripping of the hands. I mean, I don't think I can get it to do it if I clench my fists. Really tight. Uh, it's not too, it wasn't too bad that time. It doesn't do it all the time. Um, I notice it in my tongue sometimes, like when I'm speaking, it'll just feel like my tongue goes really stiff and I can't move it. I don't think it's very noticeable when I talk, but it's it does happen. And when I sneeze, uh, you know how you shut your eyes really tight? It can be difficult to open them fully again. And those are all the uh, symptoms that I notice. The doctor said that I had uh, weakness in my neck. Uh, but I don't notice it, um, and they didn't tell me any other things besides that. So my dad has to go in regularly to have um, an ECG done, so like a, a trace on your heart, just to make sure that it's conducting properly and, you know, working like it should. So I'm assuming I'm going to get called in for one of those at some point. It means that extending our, expanding our little family is going to be more complicated than I hoped. Obviously we don't have any trouble conceiving. We're quite capable, John and I, um, because we've had Leo and there was no trouble with that and I carried really well things and... But because it's 50-50 that's a huge gamble. It's like flipping a coin and one of the things that we could do is, well, we have two options. We can conceive naturally and take the gamble, which is not something I feel very comfortable with. Or we can go down the IVF route, which is, you know, they would obviously um, take eggs from me, sperm from him, and then fertilize them in, in a dish, and basically choose the embryos that don't aren't affected with the gene, and uh, implant those ones. Which I know is, is somewhat of a it has some ethical issues surrounding it. Personally, I feel like that would be the better route. I don't think it's fair or responsible to conceive a child knowing full well that they could be severely compromised. I think that's wrong. I have um, more sort of first-hand experience of that with my sister who was a severely disabled child and she died at the age of seven and a half. I certainly don't want to have to do what my parents did, which was I don't want my children to die before me. I'm doing... I went on a bit of a health bender after I found out that I started drinking more water and eating more fruit and I started to try and make sure that I was sort of exercising my mind more, reading more. It's dropped off a little. I'm still drinking quite a lot of water, and I'm trying to make sure that I keep my brain quite active. I've only got four minutes left. I mean, maybe I should stop, because I'm getting all kind of, like, yucky, and, <laughs> and I, didn't, I didn't think that I would be doing a video like this, but I think that whatever time I did this video, whether it was, like, a week after or three months after, it was going to be hard. So it's probably why I haven't done it for a while, but... Pretty soon I'm going to be moving in with John and he's vegan and I'm going to take on the vegan diet for a while and see how I feel on it but basically I'm just going to try and keep myself in optimal health because um, exercising is an important part of managing myotonic dystrophy because uh, it keeps your muscles strong, you know, you don't want to sort of have them waste away just because you're not using them so by using them you make sure that, you know, you remain healthy. I'm going to be eating really well, I want to do all sorts of stuff really, just to maintain myself. And I guess we'll come to the sort of baby 
bridge when we come to it, cross it when we get there, I guess. When I found out, uh, it was actually after a really long day. I had been with John all day at a funeral on his side of the family and it obviously it was a very supercharged day. Lots of emotions running high and it was late when we got back and the letter was waiting for me on the side. I had two letters from the hospital. One said private and confidential, the other didn't, and I opened the one that didn't first. No, I opened the one that said private and confidential first, and that was just like a throwaway letter. It didn't matter. Um, I was so gutted. And then I opened the next letter, and it was very simple. It was written by the doctor that I'd seen, and it was just, you know, we can confirm that your test results show that you have the myotonic gene um, and it just said, like, I'm sure the relevant department will be in touch with you shortly, but it's nearly April, and then no one's been in touch with me. I have another hospital appointment on the 4th, but I think that's to do with my bones. Obviously, you can see that I have unusual sort of joints and stuff, and I'm going to try and get to the bottom of that. So I'm kind of opening a can of worms, almost, but I feel like it's the right thing to do. It's, you know, to have the knowledge is better than not knowing at all and kind of just going in blind, at least this way I know what I'm dealing with. So I think I'm going to have to wrap it up now because I've only got a couple of minutes left on my um, on my camera, so thank you for listening and putting up with all of my blubbing and stuff and all my crying. I, I didn't intend to do that at all, but I'm sure you can understand it's quite a big deal. So thank you very much, uh, take care, and uh, speak to you soon. Bye.